Loving God, when we read the scriptures from the Old and New Testaments, we are seeking your wisdom, your insight, and your instruction. Open our hearts and our minds that we may grasp your truth for us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. If Will heard his father say it once, he heard him say it a thousand times. Every time Will made a mistake, his father would say, well, that wasn't very smart. Now, his father harbored no ill intentions. He thought his words would challenge his son to up his game. However, Will internalized those words, and what he heard was, you're not very smart. As you would predict, over time, Will became increasingly cautious. He was hesitant to attempt anything new, no matter how interesting, because he knew if he failed, he knew that like a weightlifter dropping a massive barbell, his father would drop those words on him that he heard only as condemnation, you're not very smart. Studies have shown that negative comments have a far greater impact on a person's self-esteem than positive ones. Tell a child he is a loser. Tell a child she is embarrassing. Tell a child he is lazy. And if you do it repeatedly, that child will live into the script you have unintentionally created. Studies indicate that with children, it requires 10 positive comments to counteract one criticism. With adults, it's not much different. The Harvard Business Review reports on research that examined 60 strategic leadership teams at a major company. The factor that made the greatest difference between the most and least successful teams was the ratio of positive comments to negative ones. They discovered that the highest performing teams always dished out 60 word, or six words of encouragement for every one criticism. The middle successful teams would hand out two compliments for every criticism. And the lowest teams, the ones who succeeded least, they found they were giving out three criticisms for every positive comment. Now, the study recognized that negative feedback has its place in avoiding disasters. 
but even the most well-intentioned criticism can rupture relationships and can undermine self-confidence and initiative. The report said that criticism can change behavior, but it does not cause people to put forth their best efforts. Encouragement is what motivates people to continue doing well what they're succeeding with, to do it with vigor and determination and creativity. It's elementary, my dear Watson. People respond better to encouragement than criticism. Better to praise than fault finding. Last week, we looked at the opening words of the Sermon on the Mount that starts with nine blessings. Today, we hear what follows the Beatitudes. Jesus has led his disciples up a steep, grassy hill that overlooks the Sea of Galilee. As he's walked up this hill, it's attracted others, farmers and stonemasons and fishermen. They've come along too because they want to hear this upstart rabbi. Now because Matthew had never laid his eyes on the Alps, he describes Jesus scaling a mountain to address a hungering crowd. Fed up with leaders who were in collusion with the occupying Romans, disgusted with a system that rewarded the wealthy landowners and kept the masses in dire poverty, and repelled by religious teachings that condemned and ostracized, the people were ravenous for a fresh word. And Jesus did not disappoint. With his provocative opening words, Jesus told those who had gathered that the ones who are blessed are not the ones living in the mansions, not the ones wearing the fine clothes, not the ones who had servants they could order around. Oh no, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed are the peacemakers. Following those nine jolting blessings, intended to set off fireworks in their brains, I suspect Jesus paused long enough for people to catch their breath. I suspect he allowed them to contemplate this radical reassessment of what blessed means in the eyes of God. While this initial volley is still simmering, lifting their spirits, rather than squashing them, Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. Even though Jesus was not privy to reports in the Harvard Business Review or Psychology Today, he knew that praise rather than criticism, blessing rather than curse, is the way to inspire. You are the salt of the earth. Now today, people in the medical field tell us that salt is an evil enemy because many people overdo it. But as every athlete or every person who works out in the heat will tell you, the lack of salt in your system is very dangerous. That's why they created Gatorade. Salt balances the fluids in our bodies and that impacts the way our muscles and nerves function. Well, in the warm, arid climate of ancient Palestine, people knew that salt could be a lifesaver. Jesus and the prophets command us to save lives, seeking justice and working for peace. This metaphor Jesus employed to describe faithful followers had numerous implications. Lacking the modern convenience of refrigeration, preserving food was a great challenge. Salt was a precious commodity because it kept food from spoiling. Naming us as the salt of the earth, 
Jesus expects us to preserve what is good and right and true and to help people, help prevent people from going bad, to help keep communities from decaying. Of course, salt not only gives food a way of preserving, but we also sprinkle it on our food to enrich the flavor, as putting it in just a pinch in chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> well, good cooks know that if the stew is bland, you just put in that pinch of salt and it enlivens the flavor. It gives it zest. Jesus counts on us to add flavor to life, to give it some punch. Regrettably, many churches have more often than not done the exact opposite. They smother ingenuity with rigidness, tamp down excitement with sternness, suck the joy out of celebrations with too much solemnity. Jesus calls on us to be the seasoning and the spice that injects life with joy. In a book entitled Salt, A World History, the author writes, until about 100 years ago, salt was one of the most sought out commodities in human history. The ancients believed that salt would ward off evil spirits. Religious covenants were often sealed with salt. Salt was used to disinfect wounds and to heal skin diseases. Roman soldiers were sometimes paid in salt, and brides and grooms rubbed salt on their bodies to enhance fertility. I did not make that up. <laughs> and do not ask me how they did it. I have no idea. <laughs> Suffice it to say that salt had a variety of positive uses. And as followers of Jesus, we too enhance the quality of life for ourselves and others. A colleague shares this story about St. Thomas Church in Leipzig. Now this church is mainly known because Johann Sebastian Bach was the music director there and Mozart played the organ. However, in the months preceding the fall of Berlin, the Berlin Wall, people began gathering in this church to say prayers every Monday night. And as they would say their prayers, they would begin to discuss what they could do about this separation between East Germany and West Germany. As more and more Christians showed up for prayer and to discuss this divide between East and West and how they could reunite it, there were warnings issued by the government about these Monday prayer services. But the people refused to stop. Eventually, a major confrontation became inevitable. Fearing the size of the Monday night crowd, on October 9, 1989, the police issued a warning that any demonstration would be stopped with whatever means necessary. Doctors from nearby hospitals stopped by the church to tell the pastor that they were making preparations to prepare for the flood of gunshot wounds they were anticipating. The pastor didn't know what to expect. On that evening, 7,000 people jammed into St. Thomas Church. Another 70,000 were in the streets surrounding the church. Each person held a candle in his hands, which was the symbol of nonviolence. Now, to keep a candle going on a cold October night, you have to use two hands. One hand holds the candle, the other one 
shelters the flame. And if you're using your two hands on a candle, you can't throw a rock. Well, there alongside the 70,000 people were tanks. They were ready if the protesters became violent. But they never did. When someone in the group would get agitated, everybody else would say, no violence, no violence, no violence. Then everyone would settle down again. Later, a government leader said, we had made our preparations and we had planned for everything. Everything except prayers and candles. The tanks withdrew. And a few days later, the wall came down. You are the salt of the earth when you possess the courage to seek justice and work for peace. You are the salt of the earth when you are compassionate and generous. And you are the salt of the earth when you spread joy and inspire hope. May you spice up people's lives and bring out the right flavor in the world. <laughs>